Here's a little riff on the gold key release. The gold key release has a structure to it. And as we go through that structure, we'll see how the functions of attention, intention, memory, and imagination lie as the functional underpinnings of the gold key release. And the gold key release starts with first selecting something in your field of feeling attention. That means your ordinary sense of you being there. Something that has your attention as a feeling. It's uncomfortable in, in some way. And it is that item that we're going to dissolve. And we begin by feeling having it. Now, feeling having it means feeling having it. Once we feel having it, we notice where in ourselves we feel having it. There's a definite sensation there. It's not necessarily a shape that's easily defined. It can be all kind of oblong, blobby shapes, for example. That's just one example. You just feel it as best you can. So you feel having it. You notice where you feel it in you. And you feel the shape of its intensity. The shape of its intensity is the feeling. The feeling has a certain intensity. You're feeling it. It's more or less intense. And it has a shape. So that's the shape of its intensity. And you feel the shape of its intensity. And then we intend it. Simple as that. We line up with it being the way it is and intend it. And now we switch, we flip to refusing it. We refuse it. So first we intend it, this shape, this intensity, we intend it, and then we refuse it. And that leaves us with a certain feeling. And what that is, is the feeling of how much it matters. And so you feel that. That's called feel how much it all matters. You feel that. And now that you've got a feeling for it, notice that the feeling of it mattering involves you. And you just feel that. I feel how that's the feeling of you is connected with that sensation of it mattering. Ain't nobody else making it matter. You're making it matter. You feel that. And you think to yourself, it's true. It's true. It's untrue. It's untrue. It's untrue. And okay? what that does, that you already believe it's true, so you don't need three. Two is enough. And then you do, it's untrue. You match up the number of its trues, and then a pause for a beat and add another one. So now you have three. That starts to outweigh the two a little bit. And you go back to two, and you go, it's true. And that rebalances it some. And then back to it's untrue, it's untrue. Again, that's shifting it from it's true toward it's untrue. But it's easier to go to true than it is to go to untrue. So we give it an extra untrue. And then it's true, it's true. And that's fairness. It's two meets two. And you just feel that. And you remember the feeling of it's true, it's true. And if you feel any resistance in remembering it's true, it's true, that's it's untrue, it's untrue. So you feel that. And when you feel it's untrue, it might nag at you that it really is true. And so you go back and you feel it's true. But again, there's something in you that's against that, and so it's untrue, it's untrue. And you remember each of those until you can get easily from one to the other. And once you can get easily from one to the other, notice or allow how ima that remembering involves imagining. To, to flip back and forth, you're actually imagining back and forth. So, 
allow how remembering involves imagining. There it is. And then you simply stop imagining. And at that moment, what you've done is create a rift between remembering and imagining. You stop imagining. And in that moment, the whole thing collapses. That is to say, it loses its cohesiveness. It dissolves. And as it dissolves, the mind is taken with it, the thinking mind. And what's left is this formless intuition that rises as a sensation through you, which I have called elsewhere the transcendental or transcendent kiss. K-I-S-S. -S. So let's go back to the beginning earlier some more. At the section where we're going, this is where we're defining the item. And we go intend, intend it, and refuse it. Well, at that stage, you can substitute completely a run-through, the basic setup procedure, which has the following shape to it. Intend. Now, that's what we're going to do. Here it goes. It'll be intend, imagine, remember, and attend to. Intend, imagine, remember, attend to. And that's the direction of the structure, and it goes like this. And you can do it just this way, or you can insert, insert your item into it, either way. So it goes intending, 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 intending your item, your item, your item activity. Intending your item activity. So that was intending. The next comes imagining. Imagining. Imagining, imagining. Imagining your item. Your item. Your item. Development. Direction. Emergence. Imagining your item. Development, direction, emergence. Next we do remembering. Remembering. Remembering, remembering. Remembering your item. Your item. Your item. Persisting continuation. Remembering your item. Persistent continuation. Next we do attending to, attending to, attending to, attending to, attending to your item, your item, your item, localization, location. Attending to your item, localization, location. And you just plug that in. We continue with the gold key release now. We feel how it all matters. Feel how much it all matters. Feel how it mattering involves you. Think to yourself, it's true. It's true. Think to yourself, it's untrue. It's untrue. It's untrue. Think to yourself, it's true. Think to yourself, it's untrue. It's untrue. Think to yourself, it's true. It's true. Remember the feeling of, it's true, it's true. Remember the feeling of, it's untrue, it's untrue. Allow how remembering involves imagining. Stop imagining. 
Let it dissolve and dissipate. Awaken. Okay, so we substituted a little plug in there. Now there's another item that can be done differently with a different interchangeable part. <clears throat> and that is the, it's true, it's true. It's untrue, it's untrue. Okay. What you can do is this variation. It's true. It's untrue. It's true. It's true. It's untrue. It's true. It's untrue. It's untrue. And then we remember the feeling of it's true. It's true. And the feeling of it's untrue. It's untrue. And hold them both in attention and notice that remembering involves imagining. And you stop imagining and it dissolves and dissipates. Okay, so now, again, the dis what it is is that when you, you start by selecting your item, you're putting your attention on it. And you select the item and you'll feel having it, and yeah, you're putting your attention on it. Notice where you feel it in you, you're putting your attention on it. Notice the shape of its intensity, you're putting your intention on it. But intensity is shifting you toward intention. And so the next step is intending it and then refusing it. That's in the area of intention. Refusing is a kind of intention. So we shifted from attention to intention. And then we feel how much it all matters. How much it all matters, again, is a matter of intention. It only matters if we have some intention going. And if we have some intention going, it's that it matters. So after that, we go to it's true, it's true. Now, it's true, it's true is an odd thing because it calls up memory but it also calls up imagination. Because the, the fact is, when we use the word true, it's a word that does not have a form of its own. It's kind of just an empty symbol. It's a little placeholder. And memory, the persistence of things, is what makes a placeholder. So now we went to attention, intention, now we have memory. Okay, we went back and forth between it's true and it is and it's untrue. And then we remember the feeling of both it's true and it's untrue. And then we transitioned to imagination. Allow how remembering involves imagining. So we went from attending to intending to remembering to imagining. And at the end Having recognized memory or remembering as a form of imagining, we can simply stop imagining. As soon as we do that, then the whole thing dissolves or it fades away. It kind of fades away. It's seeing, well, I don't know, it's quite hard to say exactly. It's just less and less there, harder and harder to find. So maybe it just loses its intensity and its vividness. In any case, the Tetris seed, that is attention, intention, memory, and imagination, always a combination of those four, relies for its existence upon the integrity, its integrity. That means its four facets must be functioning in relation to each other. They must be responsive to each other. That is to say, if you imagine something, it should go into memory. If you remember something, you conjure it up by imagination. That has to be well linked. If you pay attention to something, you have to intend to pay attention to it. So it's intending and attending go together. And if you're um, intending something and you know what you're intending, you're putting your attention on your intention. See, so those things are interconnected. And there are also the other cross connections which get dealt with in the crystal crown procedure, which is a total integrity structure that consists of the two lenses, the subjective lens, I call it, attention, 
intention, memory, and imagination, which we've been discussing, and the objective foursome. And that consists of activity, and it's universal. There's activity every place. If there's no activity whatsoever, that's in science and physics called absolute zero. And then number one, there'd be no way of experiencing it because it's not emanating any Thing that our senses can register which is always energy in some form so we can't register we also can't measure it and therefore we cannot even truly attest to its existence on the basis of any evidence whatsoever it's just a hypothetical abstraction absolute zero everything is activity the next one which corresponds to imagination is direction of development or emergence and again everything is in direction relative to everything else and everything is maintaining its existence as a kind of ongoing emergence which we might call life except that we would then exclude things like rocks which are also emerging not the same as a human but they are developing and emerging they are a direction of development of the universe of so the we're talking about now the objective physical universe so we have direction everything is related to everything else by direction and Everything is de under development and everything is in a state of emergence. That is newness. Oh, you don't know what's going to come next. N notwithstanding the conceit of prediction, which is a laughing stock, just look at meteorology. You, know, you can predict things on a very small scale and over a very short time with very few involved items. That's as far as it goes. Starts to get starts getting more complex into higher levels of form. It becomes less and less possible to predict. There's just too many possible variations. Anyway, the point being the objective universe, and that is development. The next one, which corresponds to remembering, is persistence. Everything persists, even when they're disappearing. They are persisting while they disappear. It's the reverse of emergence. It is the dissolution. Okay, or the involution, but it is the loss of its substantiality or form. It's change is what it is. And memory is persistence. So persistence and change coexist. Everything is persisting and everything is changing. Just look around the physical universe. There it is, obvious to see. And the last one, which corresponds to attention, is location or localization. Localization is the process of locating something. So when you look at something in the field of vision, you locate it with your eyes and you don't go straight at it. You generally miss or overshoot and then your eye goes back and recaptures the image and it kind of alternates side to side, back and forth until you get a centered look at the image. And this happens in a space of fractions of a second, but that's the focusing reflex. And there is a, a time period involved in that, but it is always a location, which is located. So time period, again, is memory or persistence. And attention always locates. So you have location hooked up with persistence. Well, that makes sense. When things persist, there's a location. Likewise, you have persistence and you have the direction of development. We already talked about that. There's those two things. Everything persists, but it develops while it's persisting. And then as to the development or emergence side, that hooks up with the activity side because activity is the activity of development. It's also the activity of emergence, you see. So these things make the objective world. And now we have the subjective and the objective. The subjective is attention, intention, memory, and imagination. Objective is activity, development, persistence, and location. And remember the things you're constantly developing, even minutely. Even the paint on your walls is undergoing very slow motion, color changes, and texture changes, which is why paint peels at the end, because those changes have occurred sufficiently to uh, cause a change of shape. Anyway, the point being everything, everything is in a state of development, fast or very slow, but it is all developing. Just to illustrate fast or very slow, 
technically speaking, glass, ordinary glass, you know, transparent glass, is actually a liquid. It has the internal structure at the molecular level of a liquid. And it's just a very slowly changing liquid. Very, 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 very slowly changing glass. You may check this on Wikipedia or wherever. The point being, everything is in that process. Now, the quandary and the activity of a human life consist of these two facets, the subjective and the objective. The subjective is our sense of ourselves and how we respond. So we have our attention either in our, inwardly in ourselves or outwardly in the world. We have our intention relative to whatever we have our attention on, more or less, a lot of people's attention is not where their intention is. That's another story. In any case, then we have the uh, remembering. And we have imagining. What happens is that we, we have our attention on something and it triggers a memory in us. And that memory triggers an imagining of how we guess it might be going. And an in intention rises. And it's an, a remembered intention. It's a learned response. So that's how we go about it. And so when that living or self tetra seed encounters something in the other, the objective tetra seed, which is activity, development, persistence or continuation, and location or localization, either way, you see, is the attention is always localizing, the intention is always active, the remembering is always persisting, and the imagining is always developing in some way. If it isn't developing, it's not imagination, it's memory. If you just rehash the same thing, you're not, it's true, you have to imagine your memory into existence, but it is the imagining of your memory that you're experiencing. Whereas imagining would, let's say, by a matter of degree, be increasingly free of the constraints of memory, and that leads to emergence, new emergence, things, things emerging, emerging knowledge, emerging technology, emerging insight, emerging creativity, emerging intelligence. Okay, so you see, when something happens in the external life, some, acti some activity is happening, and... It triggers a persistent response in you. That particular perception triggers a kindred response, and you're kind of imagining how it's going to be. And it's perpetual from moment to moment. So when you get something that looks a little bit uh, threatening because memory remembers it that way, we get the whole attention on it, intention toward it, remembering, and then imagining how it's going to be. All four happen at once relative to the objective experience. And the objective is just the outside of things. It's the other side. We have the inside and the outside. The subjective is inside, facing the outside. Now, a human life is summarized as an ongoing series of moments of confrontation of the subjective tetra seed self, attention, intention, memory, and imagination, or attending, intending, remembering, imagining, facing activity, persisting, developing in a certain location. Right away, you can see Clan of the Cave Bear going after some animal. They have gotten active. They've determined to go after an animal. <laughs> I don't think a bear. Maybe a saber-toothed tiger. Who knows? Wolverine. They determine it. They put your, their attention on it. They move toward it. They move in the direction of it, and they locate it, and they capture it or kill it. That's Clan of the Cave So this is an ancient, ancient, ancient structural pattern. Ancient, ancient, ancient. It is so ancient that it dates back to the origin of this apparent universe. This is another topic of discussion, an amusing one, but I think not for this present consideration. Well, right now we're just talking about the Tetra Seed, and I've shown you how the quandary of life has to do with remembered responses to things we have our attention on that look like, from their activity, something that stimulates that memory, and that response then is called into play. And it's all a, a, a 
an automatic behavior. The problem is when in the human, we don't have all four of those functions well integrated and online. And I showed you integration where you intend what you're, you intend to pay attention to something, you attend to what you're intending, that bit. Okay. It has to be well integrated. And it's certainly possible for it not to be, for one or more of those combinations not to be really easily accessible to you, that you can't even think the words back and forth very quickly. You have trouble remembering saying attention, intention, intention, attention, attention, intention. You lose it though. You're, you have trouble keeping track of it. See, so that's a sign of a poor integration. And with poor integration, we do not function well and we get stuck. And we stay stuck in that kind of condition until we get all four of those faculties online and well integrated, at which point the whole thing immediately begins to change. It's felt that there is an internal shift, just as you felt with the gold key release itself when I took you through it. There is a shift. And that shift is a wordless shift. It's below the level of the, or underpinning the, law, the level of the thinking mind and the word mind. It's a feeling shift. You can't describe the flavor of an apple. If you use it in comparison to something else, it's only approximate, okay, and not necessarily even close. So this is a shift of that type. And when a person gets those four faculties turned on and integrated, particularly with the crystal crown procedure, that's what that is specifically structured for. It's a rigorous procedure. Rigorous, rigorous. And it's uh, somewhat lengthy, but it's rigorous. And you get all those faculties online and things shift in you. And you don't just think they shift. You feel them shift. And then you feel different afterwards and in the day that follows. And, and you might, uh, after that, go through a, a period that I call burn-off. And it's an occasion when an area that you've dissolved or shifted, the habit pattern resurges. It's, it's got kind of an, a memory resonance to it. It has a kind of persistence to it. Even though you've made the shift at the deeper level, at the surface level, hmm, let, me, let me flip that around. You feel it at the deeper level as if you're still in it. But when you behave, you notice that you behave very differently. You surprise yourself because your behavior seems much more mature and capable than the way you seem to be feeling at the moment. Okay, That's an episode that lasts uh, a day or thereabouts, sometimes to a few days or so, rarely for longer, in which you experience this resurgence of that tendency in yourself that you dissolve, but a heightened awareness of it. And there's nothing that you need to do about it. It will dissolve on its own. And if you try to do something about it, such as more Tetra Seed procedure, you will find that there doesn't seem to be anything there to work on. It just doesn't bring up anything. Even though you feel that sensation, the procedures don't bring anything up. That's your sign that it's burn off, and you don't bother with it. You give yourself a day and a half or thereabouts, and that's usually about what it takes for it to come through and pass out and uh, then you know you can go after some other aspect of life that you have trouble with so uh, this is this has been a riff on the gold key release and as it turns out on the tetra seed